Well, hello. Thanks for coming back to check out another video. So, are you tired about hearing me ramble on and ramble on about eyeshadow palettes yet? I had planned on doing like a dedicated palette week this month, but it just didn't work out. But I had a lot of those videos already filmed, so you're still getting a lot of palette related content. Um, this one, we have talked about how many times have I used eyeshadow palettes in my collection. We've talked about all of the new eyeshadow palettes that have come into my collection. So it is finally time today to talk about all of the palettes that have went unused in my collection for the year of 2022. Now, like I said in the tracking video and the new palettes video, I really wanted this to go up at the beginning of April because I'm doing like quarterly or I guess, yeah, you could still say quarterly. It's every three months. Either way, I'm doing like quarterly updates. So the tracking is from January until March. A lot of these palettes that I have here, I'm not gonna go over them when I get to them. A lot of them I have actually used as we sit here like present day, but we're talking about like in the past, you know what I mean? So if this had, if I had been able to put this up at the beginning of April like I wanted to, it would have made a little bit more sense. It would have been a little bit more true to what's actually been used in my collection. So hopefully that is okay. That makes sense to you guys. Um, like I said, I'm not going to point it out every time where it's like, oh, but I have actually used this palette. So if you hear me though, do say something like, I really do enjoy this and I can't wait to get more use out of it. The formula is really nice. Like it's probably just that I have actually already used it. You know, I'm not going to ramble on too much further. I think we're going to break this down brand by brand. I will leave chapters for you. But the first thing we're gonna do is just one-off palettes where I only have like either one palette from that brand as a whole in my collection or just one palette to talk about in general. Okay, so if you guys caught my like small palette declutter video, you'll know that I had a few palettes in there that were like on the chopping block, we will say. Funnily enough, have not used any of those palettes that are on the chopping block. So this first one that was on the chopping block, this is from Beauty Bakery. This is the I'm With The Cookie Baking Crew palette. They put this out at Target in holiday 2021. Yeah, haven't used it. The next one I have here is my Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. It's a really pretty, like, I could see this working as like a fall and like a summer to fall palette. Um, but yeah, that one has went unused. I'm trying not to like, ramble on too much because we do have so many palettes to get through so another one that is unused in my collection is my give me glow christmas morning palette this is what this one looks like on the inside man i have to say the give me glow shimmer formula it's like they're foiled you know what i mean so your eyes it looks wet you know really pretty okay the next one kind of hurts me to admit it to you the Natasha Denona Love Palette. I think I just got so swept up in the hype of like, oh, it's Natasha Denona and I can get it for $32 or whatever. Um, I really didn't need this palette. So yeah, it's just an uninspiring color story in my opinion, but I'm not ready to like part with it. You know what I mean? Like I wanna try it out and put it to the test because I do love me some good pink eyeshadow. So the reason I'm kind of like uh, staying on this one more than the others I do have a video plan that you will see later this week, I think. We're gonna pop out all of the shades in here and rearrange this palette and see if that helps Haley get more use out of that one. Okay, let's try not to drop something. Okay, so up next to talk about is from Nabla. This is their Dreamy 2 palette. This is a really pretty palette, my favorite Nabla palette that I've ever tried. Nabla's palettes, they have a different eyeshadow formula across the board in different palettes, I think. Some of their shimmers are flaky. This one does not have that flaky shimmer formula and it is quite lovely. Like I've used this obviously in the past, just not for this year. Okay, so the next one's gonna look a little funny because I have a pan of eyeshadow in this palette, like a new pan that I've hit this year. But like I've said before, if I reached into a palette to use it for like its matte cream shade to set down my eyeshadow primer, or I dipped into a shadow to do my eyebrows, then I'm not counting it as a use because we are tracking like what eye looks, like what palettes are you looking for for eye looks, you know what I mean, or reaching for. So this is from Huda Beauty. This is the Wild Jaguar palette. It's what this one looks like on the inside. It's a really pretty, like cool toned, moody palette. I just haven't been in a moody mood, you know what I mean? I mean, I have, but not for that. <laughs> so the next one is the Persona Identity palette. Now I will say, if I go the whole year without using this identity palette, I won't even be mad because when I open it up, you can see in there, hopefully we have three 
shadows completely finished and another pan of eyeshadow in this palette like obviously this palette has gotten a lot of love in its lifetime and i haven't really been on a neutral kick i know today's eye look would you know suggest otherwise but i really haven't been on a neutral eye kick so this is just a palette where i know that i love it and so if i don't use it this year it's okay with me okay the next one kind of along the same veins is the persona one this is my Lorac fairy tale forest palette now when i open mine up it's going to look quite different than yours if you own this palette because i did rearrange this so this is what mine is looking like on the inside again i just haven't really been on that neutral kick but i feel like i will get back to it at some point and i'm going to appreciate having all of these neutral palettes in my collection now the last palette like the last one off one that i want to show you is I included this in my, you know, palettes that are new to me this year because it's it's obviously new to me. Um, but I can't remember if this palette released in March or April. So if it released in April, then technically it doesn't count for this video. But if it released in March, then it does count. Do you know what I mean? So it's the Adept palette that Heather Austin did with them as a collaboration palette. Oh, I wish I could show you guys on camera. I can never get it to work where you can like show off the shifts in those duo and multi-chrome shadows, but just so pretty, so pretty. Okay, so that wraps it up for the one-off palettes. Okay, so up next, let's talk about the BH Cosmetics palettes that have went unused in my collection so far this year. So I have two from the Say It collection. So the first one is Low Key Love You, just a really pretty like neutral palette. Do we see a theme? I think we will see a theme. How many of these will end up being neutral palettes? Okay, then we have looking like a snack. You have to, you just have to. My brain won't let me say it normally. That's what this one looks like. Really pretty, you know? Um, I just feel like I have those colors time and time again. It's kind of like the Natasha Denona Love palette. You know what I mean? Okay, then we have from the Sweet Shop collection, I have the Bubblegum palette, which is a really pretty blue palette. I, I wanted to say, like, it's my new favorite blue palette, but I technically haven't used it. Wink, wink. Anyway, I have the orange sherbet palette from the Sweet Shop collection as well. That's what that one looks like. And then I do have their three dance remix palettes, we will say. So this is the 80s, which is vibrant and neon and reflective. So sorry. Then we've got the 90s, which is the, like, pastel version of the 80s. I think that those two will pair really nicely together. And then we have the 2000s, which is dark and moody and cool toned and really lovely. So that wraps it up for BH Cosmetics. Can you tell I'm just picking palettes up off the floor? Okay, so next let's do Kaleidos. I'm really like bummed to admit to you guys, I have not used any of my Futurism palettes so far this year. So up first we have Sci-Fi Green. It's gonna take me a hot minute to get all of these op open because the little plastic insert. But yeah, this one has been discontinued and I don't know why they did that. That was just silly on their part. So then I have Astro Pink, which is probably my favorite, like most wearable one we'll say. That is what that one looks like, super pretty. Then up next we do have now, technically I decluttered this palette, but I brought it back because no one in my life wanted it. And so it's just going to stay in my collection. Like I will learn to love this palette, but it is also the, um, it's from the Futurism line, but it's the Electro Turquoise palette. So there is that one. It's just the mattes in there kind of throw me off. You know what I mean? Like I like all of those shades individually as singles. The last one is Lunar Lavender. If I could get this open. Oh, don't blind you with the mirror. That is what this one looks like. A really pretty icy cool tone purple palette. Wish I would have pulled this out more in the like winter time. All right, let's move on to ColourPop. I only have two ColourPop palettes to talk to you about. So the first one is Lust for Dust. Now I would have swore to you that I did dip into this this year, like this winter, but like I said in the tracking video, I'm not gonna be a stickler. If we've miscounted or missed something, it's okay. At the end of the day, this was just supposed to be a fun exercise. This is just one of the great moody, cool toned palettes. So hopefully come fall and winter, we'll use this again. And then Sonic Bloom, I'm not worried about Sonic Bloom. I know that in the fall time, this is gonna get a lot of use. It's just so pretty, such a fall color story. Okay, so up next, let's talk about the three Juvia's Place palettes that have went unused in my collection so far this year. So the first one is one of their quads. This is the Honey Quad. At first I thought like, oh, it's because it's a quad and it's a smaller palette. That's why you haven't reached for it. Like you just, it gets lost in the shuffle. 
but I've managed to successfully reach for all of my other smaller palettes, you know? So I think it more just breaks down to the formula and the color story, but there is that one. Then also a palette that is on the chopping block that I have not yet even dipped into is the Saharan palette. I know this is so many people's favorite. I don't know what it is. I only like two shadows from in here, Wodabi and Kia. Is it really, should I really even just keep it around for those two shades? I know the answer. I know the answer and I know it's no. All right, the last one from Juvia's Place is the Nubian 2. This one pains me a little bit that I haven't used it. This is one of, this would probably be my third favorite Juvia's Place palette. I just like the jewel tones in here. This is a very dark palette though. Like no matter what you do, if you just dip into this palette, your look is going to be very dark, vampy, and moody. Okay, so up next, let's talk about it. I have both of my Menagerie palettes in here. I'm really surprised. I really thought that I had at least used Killer Purr. So that's the one we will first talk about. Now, when I open this up, I am missing four eyeshadows. I have already finished off Antelope from in this palette, which sat right here. And then I popped out three other shades from here that I just did not feel like worked with this palette, with what I wanted from this palette. So I am contemplating ordering some single shadows from Menagerie to put into this palette and kind of round it off and make it more perfect for me. But much like the Persona palette, this palette has gotten so much use in its lifetime with me that if I do go the whole year of 2022 without reaching for it, I'm okay with that. And then like I said, I do have the Whale Song palette, which is a very pretty, sorry if I blinded you with that mirror, very pretty blue palette. I think it's just I don't know, I guess I got caught up in like other blue palettes. All right, so just two more brands to go over with you. The first one we will talk about is Sugar Drizzle. Now this first one isn't actually an eyeshadow palette and I think I'm going to move it into my eyeliners. I feel like I'll get a lot more use out of it this way. This is actually a cake eyeliner palette. The background or the packaging is super reflective. So this is all duochrome liners and they're water activated you know what i mean i had this in with my palettes because i thought like oh i'll use this and put this on as like lid shades it doesn't really work that well as like a traditional just like duochrome like sh you know shadow like powder shadow so i am probably going to move this into my eyeliner collection and not really count it in as a palette anymore i feel like that's more than fair since it is actually an eyeliner palette anyway the other palette from sugar drizzle that i have is the pickle palette now I do have to tell you guys, I'm obsessed with pickles. I love to drink pickle juice. Anyway, um, this is really pretty. I wish I could get to show you the shiftiness of this palette too. Like I'm pretty sure this shade Dill Pickles up here for you guys probably looks pink. I think it looks pink in the viewfinder, but to me it's gold. Like it's just such a pretty fun, unique palette. Okay, so the last ones to talk about is Nomad Cosmetics. So I have the America's Parks. I don't know why I have to like constantly say it that way, but here we are. This is ooh, so pretty. I think part of my hang up is that Nomad put imprints like little cute uh, designs in the pans and then part of my brain is like, oh, but you can't ruin it, you know? Okay, so then we also have Haunted Europe, last but not least. And so this one kind of makes my brain hurt just a little bit. Like it's a little bit of a chaotic color story. I'm not sure where to start with it. You know what I mean? But yeah, that wraps it up. That is all of the eyeshadow palettes that I have not used yet this year in 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed this coming along with me. Let me know. What do you think? What palette should I really try to focus in on and use next? I thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you're having a good day, a good night, or a good whatever. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.